Hello everyone and I would like to welcome you to the amazing and happy learning journey of our presentation. So, we are group number 27 and we are here to present our project done under the course CL246 named as heat transfer. So, myself Gaurav Shilsad and I am the generator of the group. Along with me, I have Shadnam Faria who is the generator. Next to the generator, we have ideators, which are Vivek Singhal and Maurya Nur. Then planners are Vishal Meghwal and Vinit Kumar. With the solvers, Lovgar and Shah. So guys, let's begin the presentation. So we all know that today's energy demand is much higher. And with the time, we'll definitely have scarcity of energy supply. We all went to restaurants and hotels, where large consumptions of heat take place because we are still using the traditional methods for heating and cooling. As an IT Bombay students, we also occasionally go to the restaurants to have dinner and the stuff. We felt that we should study this issue because let's find the solution for this problem which will affect our future generation. So as a result of our research and with the help of lot of sources and books, well detailed study of the system, we thought heat exchangers would be the better fit for this problem. Occasionally, through getting our solution, we came across the journey of different kind of ideas. We also came up across chimneys and wearing some different type of clothes and uh, all these things. But all these not sounding effective. As a result, we are gone with heat exchangers. So, our solution will ultimately help society by saving energy for future generations. But currently, it will help people working in the field of restaurant and hotel management, particularly in food preparation. And in this study, we are trying to solve the problems of excessive use of energy. Because we all know we can't afford the wastage of energy. Today's world running as of energy crisis. One of our observed sources of wastage energy is restaurant, like commercial method of heating and cooling. So we are here to represent our solution of heat exchangers. So guys, in this video, you will get to know what exactly heat exchangers are, how they are useful in working and solving our problem, and lot more about the process. So be with us till the end of our video. I will assure you, you will definitely going to love the presentation. As we have discussed in the previous slide, that we are using heat exchanger for transferring the heat from the hot air to the cold water uh, to the cold water which is coming from the inlet. So basically, a heat exchanger is a system which is used to transfer heat between two or more fluids, fluid or gas. So heat exchanger are used in both cooling and heating processes. In this process, we are using a cross flow heat exchanger in which cool water flows through the tube and hot air enters through the inlet. In this project, we are using a heat exchanger which is made up of steel pipes. Now coming to the approach which, are, which we are using to solve this problem statement. Uh, so we are using integral balance approach and uh, the outer walls of the heat exchanger is assumed to be adiabatic. Uh, so no heat exchange uh, is taking place uh, through the outer cylinder and only the heat exchange is between uh, in, inside the control volume now we are considering now we have to consider which modes of heat transfer that uh, we should consider in this problem statement so for the conduction from the outer rod as we have assumed it to be a diabetic wall a diabetic the conduction from the outer wall is negligible next we are considering the conduction from the inner rod so for that, we are calculating the conductance of the steel rod with thickness 1 mm and diameter 25 mm with the length 3 meters. So in the overall heat transfer coefficient, the contribution of the conductance, uh, conductance part came out to be negligible in comparison to the convection mode of heat transfer. So we, have ne so we are neglecting this. Next, we are calculating the radiation part. The radiation from the outer wall is assumed to be, uh, is assumed to be negligible as the walls were, uh, walls were assumed adiabatic. Now we are calculating the radiation from the inner uh, from the inner cylinder, uh, which uh, which came out to be negligible in comparison to the convection part. Hence, we are considering only the convection mode of heat transfer for the solution. Hello, my name is Sharnam Faria. I'll be explaining the following parts. First, the technical problem: a counterflow concentric tube 
heat exchanger is used to cool the hot air coming through a exhaust fan in the restaurant. The flow rate of the cooling water through the inner tube is 0.11 kg per second, while the flow rate of the air through the outer annulus is 0.23 kg per second. The length of the heat exchanger is 3 meters and the air and water entry enters at the temperatures of 50 and 20 degrees Celsius respectively. Our aim is to find the outlet temperature of air and water and also to find the heat extracted from air in one day of operation in joules. Next we have the simplifying assumptions. We have taken the following simpli simplifying assumptions for our calculations. First, that the heat loss to the surrounding is negligible because the outer pipe, outer pipe walls are adiabatic. The kinetic and potential energy changes are taken to be negligible. All properties of water and air are considered to be constant. The tube wall thermal resistance is taken to be negligible. Fouling factors are taken to be negligible. Fully developed conditions for the water coming through the pipe and hot air which, are, which we are pushing into the heat exchanger. Negligible radiation and negligible thickness of pipe which neglects the conduction in the system. Now this is the used data that we have taken for our calculations. The properties of water at 28 degrees Celsius and the properties of air at 40 degrees Celsius are taken from the textbook using table A.6 and A.4. This is the temperature profile that we've made. On the x-axis we have the distance along the heat exchanger and on the y-axis we have the temperature. These are the equations for unknowns that we have used. First for the water flow through the pipe. Through the pipe RE is equal to 4m by pi di mu. Accordingly, the flow is turbulent and the convection coefficient may be computed from the equation 8.6, where nu is equal to 0.023 into RE raised to 0.8 into PR raised to 0.4. The flow of air through the annular the hydraulic diameter from the equation 8.71 is dh is equal to d0 minus di. The Reynolds number is RE equals to 4m by pi d0 plus di times mu. Then we have the, accordingly the following is turbulent, the flow is turbulent and the convection coefficient may be computed from the following equation NU is equal to 0 0.0265 into RE raised to 0 0.8 into PR raised to 0 0.3 and U is equal to 1 by 1 upon 1 by HI plus 1 by H0. CR is equal to Cmin by Cmax. NTU is equal to UA by Cmin and using table 13.3 we get the following epsilon NTU relation for the counter flow. Next, we, use, we get Q max is equal to C min times THI minus TCI and Q is equal to epsilon times Q max. After all the calculations, we get uh, that the heat saved in one day will be 47592 joules. Thank you. So going ahead, I am going to explain new CFD analysis. We have used the ANSYS Fluent Solver to make the CFDs for the control volume. We have used the same initial condition as we have used in the technical problem and with the same dimensions. We have used the steel pipes and to incorporate the non idle behavior, we have used the k epsilon model. So here you can see the temperature distribution of the air inlet and the water outlet. And here you can see the temperature distribution of the air outlet and the water inlet. So I have prepared an animations as well so you can enjoy it. As for the conclusion, we found that on an average 4.7 into 10 to the power 8 amount of heat can be conserved in a restaurant in only a single day of operation if our setup is installed. So we were able to use the hot air to heat the water and therefore we conserve energy because now the hot water can be used in restaurant. What are the limitations of our assumptions? We assume that outer pipe to be adiabatic, but there will always be heat transfer between outer pipe and environment. We assume the conduction in the inside pipe to be negligible, but there will be some temperature drop due to it. We assume air is clean, but in a restaurant there will be smoke. 
that will deposit in our head life changer so we we have to solve the problem of smoke to make it work better so in future we are aiming to do something about the deposition of the particles in our head life changers and we aim to save an um, enormous amount of heat energy i hope you like our project this thank you